Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. Today, the show comes to you from Burslem in the Potteries. Just look at these smiling faces. They brought along their treasures, they want to do business, and some are tough negotiators. Want to lose it for a tenner? Uh, uh, You've not totally wet the appetite for it. Have an eye. We're going to get David in. Don't threaten me with David. Will they take the cash on offer from our dealers? Or will they gamble and come with the Duke to auction? £200 a bit straight away for this. Are we going to score here? Are we going to get bold now? We're giving it away at £700. Mamma mia. Sold. I'm Tracy. Hello, Tracy. I'm Amanda. Nice to meet you, Amanda. Me Making her debut today is our glamorous new dealer, Tracy Thackeray Howard, and she can't keep it zipped. This is my first deal of the day, and I am so excited. Louis Vuitton handbag, what can I say? Handbags, just love them. Got to have it. I'm hoping Tracy is a girly girl, and it will prove popular with her, and I'll get my 250 to 300 pounds. Here it is. May I ask why you're parting with it? Um, well, I bought it uh, quite a few years ago now, and basically I need to uh, make room for some more. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> I love handbags. Right, well, let's have a little look and see what we've got. OK. So, I'll just open it up. Bright red lining in. And we've got the... Label inside, Louis Vuitton Paris, made in France. Beautiful workmanship. Mm -hmm. And the LV logo. Louis Vuitton was founded in 1853. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we've got the double pockets at the front. Yep. Plenty of room for lots of stuff. Absolutely. <laughs> you can get the kitchen sink in there. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about Louis Vuitton is the quality is absolutely superb. Mm -hmm. You know, the perfect stitching. Mm -hmm and this leather trim, yeah. they're just beautiful. And if you've ever seen a copy, they're all over the place. The right. stitching's wonky. They're just not very, very nice at all. Yeah, it's in good condition, considering it's about 11 yeah. years old. Yeah. And then we've got the original dust cover. Mm-hmm. Can't them... get any dust on that. No, <laughs> no, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I think we should um, talk some money. OK, we'll try. <laughs> right, 20, 40, 60, 80. I'm afraid not. Am I anywhere near? No? Um, OK, we'll keep going. So, 100, mm -hmm. 20, 40, and we'll try. One of these, 150. No. I'm afraid. No. no. Okay. Crazy, I've come in just to give you a little bit of help and a bit of guidance. Amanda, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Still, and more so than ever, fashionable. Indeed. Uh, probably when this was bought, four or five hundred pounds, something like yeah. that. 250 pounds to 300 pounds is what our independent valuers say. So I think it's worth a little bit more. Going to auction, there are lots of ladies that lunch that could be tempted. Okay, thank you. And I think I'm going to put some more money on the table. Okay. Only because I want to take it home with me. <laughs> but I have to be sensible. Okay. 170. 190. 200 and 220 and that's me done okay would you consider putting any more down no that's where i want to be i think that's the fair offer okay so if you were to go a bit more we would have a deal i love it but i've already got some and i'm gonna have to sneak this in the back door <laughs> <laughs> i think you will do well with it no i'm gonna keep it <laughs> i'm gonna keep it <laughs> okay 230 2.30? Yeah. I'd like so. 2.40. That's where I want to be. Want to lose I've, it for a tenner? Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. OK, you win. 
you for our test. OK, we've got that a deal. OK? Yep, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to love it. <laughs> I am very happy because if I took it to auction, um, there is a chance I would have received less. So I think on the day, that was a good deal. I am in love. I love it. This has made my day. Carry on like that and you will be a model dealer. So, Amanda, any idea what you're going to buy next? Hmm, I'm not quite sure. It could be another bag, maybe more craft bars. Who knows? <laughs> And guess what's turned up on Alison Chapman's table? Derek, Derek, nice to meet you. Derek's brought in a bars and plenty of optimism. Alison's a very nice dealer, and uh, I'm hoping to bring her under control and get the best deal out of it. And I'm looking for around about 150 to 200. Lovely piece of Moorcroft, classical shape, just my cup of tea. And you've brought this beautiful, beautiful hibiscus vase by yes, Moorcroft. Yes. What can you tell me about it? I bought it about uh, six years ago in uh, auction, and uh, that's more or less what I know about it like. I do collect one or two bits of Moorcroft like, but I just want to change them now and get something else. Well, Moorcroft is a very, very popular factory, and it was really the arrival of William Moorcroft that set them up nicely because he was a fabulous designer. And it's a handsome looking thing, isn't it? And underneath I can see it's still got its original sticker and it says Potters to the late Queen Mary. Queen Mary, yes. And I think it was in about 1928 she gave Moorcroft their royal warrant. Yeah. Um, this vase is somewhat later, I would say it's 1950s. Mm -hmm. In this berry colour, very yeah, fashionable yeah. at the moment, elegant yes, yes. and classic, and it would sit very nicely on any mantelpiece. Yeah, yeah. I've had a good look, and one of the things we do as dealers to see if it's been restored is this. Yes, I've seen that done on the television, yes. And what I'm looking for is a soft spot. Yeah, yeah. Which will tell me it's yeah. had... Restoration. And uh, I can't see anything wrong with that. That looks good. So what did you pay for it six years ago? Uh, I think it was 120 or something like that. Oh, I would have thought you'd have paid less, but no. No, no. You're obviously quite a generous man. Are you going to be as generous to me? Yes, I 50? Yep. 100? Some more. 150? Another one. 170. Another one, isn't it? This one. One eighty. Just a bit more. Well, I think that's quite a keen offer actually yeah, if I'm yeah, yeah, with you. It's a good offer, yeah. That is an offer to buy and not muck you about. Yeah, yeah so another five. Ooh. It's a taxi fare. Mm, I think you need David. Well, I'm listening from the sideline there, and we all know Moorcroft is very popular. This is a little bit late. Well, she's right on the money, I can tell you that now. Yep. 150 to 2 mm. is the estimation. So, yep. I can't say any more no. other than she's right on the button. Yep. Very current, price-wise, yep. that's about its money. Yep. Well, that'll do for me, Alison. The man's told you you're going to take my money. I am. It's a deal. It's a good deal. Thank you very Thank much, you. darling. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alison. A nice deal. The vase is just the stock I like to have. And I can tell you now, I should make 80, 100 pounds on it. Oh, will you now? Hello, I'm Henry. Hello, Henry. Next, Wynne's turned up with something small but perfectly formed for Henry Nichols. I've bought a little ivory figurine and I'm hoping to get between 80 and 100 pounds for it. I'm going to play my cards quite close but looking somewhere 40 to 60 pounds. You'll have to do better than that, Henry. You brought me in a really, really sweet little ivory figure. Yes. Where on earth did you find it? 
it was inherited from my aunt and I've had it about 20 odd years. Right. And um, I'm just downsizing. Okay. Was your aunt well travelled? How do you think she came um, across it? I think she probably um, inherited it from her parents. Right. Well, it's known as an okimono. An okimono is basically an object to be displayed. This one's really, really sweet. Um, it's very nicely carved and it's basically depicting an old man, maybe a sage, but what's really sweet is the little boy is actually sitting there holding a frog. I love it. And we'll turn it up on the bottom. Sometimes you find on the base of these that they have a little artist signature. This one doesn't. It has what looks like a carp oh, right. carved on the bottom of it. Oh. It's definitely a fish of some sort. I've never carved noticed there. that. And I can tell from the style of the carving and the quality of it that it's what we would describe as being Meiji period, which went from around about the 1860s through to sort of 1910, 1920, that sort of period. This one I would put to around about 1900 to 1910. One minor problem. Yes. Sadly, if we turn him round, we can see there's glue marks, which means that the head has at some point been snapped off and glued back. Nevertheless, it's still a nice thing. So I'll get some money out, Wynne, and see if I can tempt you part with it. OK. Ten. Twenty. Thirty pounds. No. That was a very definite no. No. Forty pounds. Nope. Nope. Still a million miles away. Yes. Yeah. If I take that ten pounds away and put a twenty pound note down, it takes me to fifty pounds. Mm -hmm. How does that seem to you? Nope. Do you know what? I'm going to be stubborn and try and persuade you one last time to take my hard-earned cash. No. I think... £55 win. No. Come on, take my money. No, not for that kind of money. Well, that's where I want to be. I'm going to stick at £55. No, I'm not selling it. You're not selling it? Auction it is then. Yes. Fabulous. Thank you, Wynne. We tried. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Henry just didn't offer me enough money and I want to take my sister to see a West End show, so off to auction we go. I hope that she does well at auction with it, but somehow I'm not sure. But today's auctioneer, Robert Stones, is much more confident. There's no reason why it shouldn't be making the kind of money that we're looking for. Looking forward to selling it. 20, I have you at 20 pound bids there. It's a wonderful thing. A rather attractive Japanese ivory, and by the way, it fits within the CITES Treaty. We have to be very correct today. Anything, of course, post-1947 is not acceptable. This, of course, will have been produced around the very latter part of the 19th century. It is coming up now, and there is a reserve set at 70 quid. Let's see what happens. Lot number 60, what may we say for this? A lot of interest in it. I can start bidding at this straight away at £70 a bid at 70. 75, I have at 75, 80 is the now. At 75 pounds, bid at 75. 80 anywhere now do I hear? At 75, 75. Thought there'd been some interest on the internet on this I'm one. I'm surprised the internet's not 80, coming 80, in. I'm in the doorway. It's 80, 85, I have at 85, 90 is the now. At 85 pound bids here with me. 85, 85 pounds, pounds on commission uh, with the auctioneer. All quiet. Sold, 85. 85 pounds. I expected just a little bit more than that. Take away the commission, it's about 69 pounds. So, what are you going to do with this money? Well, I did say on the dealer's day, if I did sell it, I would take my sister, who is getting over a serious illness, I would take her down to the West End and we'd go to a show together. Sounds good to me. Down to the West End. Mamma mia. One of those shows, something like that? Well, it might be Miss Saigon. That sounds a real tonic to me. That's a real deal, isn't it? I came to auction and I've had the last laugh. Hey ho, can't win them all. Back in the den can trace your ring Stuart Hofgartner's bell. I'm a little bit nervous about this, but I'm going to try my damnedest get 50 quid off Stuart. Black Baker like Teddy Pans, I buy them every day of the week. I know exactly what they're worth and I know what I want to pay for it. 
Do tell me how you've acquired it and what do you know about it? Um, I bought it off a tabletop sale about six months ago for £20. Good, good, yeah. Um, we've had wires connected to wires and we know that it works, but it's too heavy for me. You're right about it being heavy. I mean, certainly I remember these when I was a young one. Um, and youngsters today wouldn't even recognise it, no. probably. They think it's out of the arc, wouldn't they? Yeah. But, uh, so, not easy to use and something about it, though. You get a real ring when you ring it. Yes. Well, this is a 300 series. It's probably 50s, 60s, maybe. It's quite a nice model. It's got the drawer in it. And in the drawer, you'd normally have a, um, a list of the codes to tie in with the number here. But that, that's gone missing, but that's not a problem. Right. I buy one or two a week of this model, um, and I have them converted by a specialist to, to fit modern day telephone lines. Yeah. So they are a very popular thing still, and you're still well in pocket for your 20 quid. Yeah. That was a good buy, 20 pound. Let's see if I can buy it. I'd right. like to buy it. Okay. It's almost a standard price to buy these at. I know it, you don't know it. So right. that's your money back. Yeah. That's a goodish profit. Yeah. That's the price I want to pay you for it. 60 quid. Yeah. That's a good profit. Right. Um, I don't know. I could do a bit more. What's on the table, Tracy? 60 pounds for an old telephone. Well, my independent value as an auctioneer, they're going from 40 to 55. Right. The man. He's the barometer for this kind of material. He says 60, I can't beat that. And so I cannot say more than, you know what I'm thinking. He buys it, he gives the best price, he's the man. <laughs> Thank you, David. 60 pound on the table? Yes. Over to you. Like okay, to we have you. a deal? Yes. Thank, Thank you, you very much. I'm quite happy because he tripled me money and that's a real deal. It is, but come on, you sellers, stop telling the dealers what you paid. I bought one yesterday, I'll buy one tomorrow, and I bought one today now. You sound hung up on them, Stuart. <laughs> Hello, my name's Alison. Avril. Up next are lovebirds Terry and Avril, who plan to work as a tag team. I think we can wheedle a little bit out of her. We'll see how far she goes in the first instance. And then we'll work on it, won't we, Avril? We will, we certainly we will. will. We certainly do that. I've got a fabulous Battle of Britain jacket, and I suspect the sellers are going to be a lot of fun. This is a mighty fine jacket, so what's its story? Well, the story is um, a month ago, Avril bought it for me, and we found out that it belonged to a member of the motor torpedo boat crews who would have been used to pick up any air crew from either Spitfires, Oricons or whatever. The crew ended up in the channel. They would, they would get to them quickly and get them back to shore in the Battle of Britain, 1940. And the badge on the side represents what it says. How interesting. And you didn't have any idea? You no, just bought it? As a joke. As a, why were you buying it as a joke? Because he was in the RAF and he said uh, the first uniform we uh, had on was itchy and scratchy, and that was itchy and scratchy and dusty. And I cleaned it with a bare brush and it came up beautifully. So you were in the Air Force? I was in the Royal Observer Corps. Right. Which is part of it. And is that where the two of you first met? No. But we met 50 years ago, 1964. In 1964? We never took any notice of one another, really. And then you didn't see each other for 50 years? And then we met in the allotments. And lo and behold, at the top of the allotments is Avril. Bending down, very short skirt, very low. So court, I yeah. sidled Bending up there and, and said, hello, do you remember me? It's just a brilliant story. And um, we, we just met and, and got together. Years. And we've been together it's since It's only 50 April. years. Aww. And we're treasuring it every So minute. we've been together six months and we, I bought that as a joke. So you bought it at auction. And did you find anything else in it? I found a, a lover's brooch. Probably given to by his mother when he went out to sea. So you found the good luck token. The good luck jacket. token and a French letter. A French letter? A French letter, which would have been used for keeping your map dry or anything you valued. 
if you got oh. into water. I've learned something today. Do you know, even I didn't know that, Alison. Didn't you? You live and learn. OK, well, I think it's money on the table time. 20? No. 40? No. 50? No. Well, what's she going to do? We're going to get David in. Don't threaten me with David. He's coming in. And here he is, <laughs> in person. <laughs> well, I've got a pair of estimations here, Alison, that you're going to think, blimey, where have they got those from? So, they've got a 1 to 2, and they've got a 150 to 250. Now, what have you got down there? 50 quid, Alison? Yeah, 50. It would appear to me that that was a kind of going rate for a 1940s mass-produced jacket. But we have a military expert, right. and he's the one with the 150 to 250. So, I'm going to leave it with you for a decision. I'm interested to find out if our expert is right. I'm not going to increase my offer. So, what are the two of you going to do? Auction. Auction. Done. Done. So, before I say goodbye, what did you pay for it? £25. You're a canny lady. I didn't you? know it was a sleeper, did I? Well, Alison's great, isn't she? She's a lovely person, but Absolutely. she didn't put enough money down. No. So we're going to go to auction and hopefully be very rich. I was really surprised by the independent valuations on the jacket. Robert, you're the auctioneer. Care to explain? So much of this is becoming really sought after, so this has got the labels, the badges, everything's perfect. I think this is going to do really well. £150, no problem. Over in the sale room, a Terry and Avril still feeling confident. We've made the right choice, Avril, haven't we? It started out as a bit of fun, but hey-ho, we're here. So, okay. here's to it. Oh, you two, get a rum. When you got this, were you made up with this present? I've tried it on straight away. Unfortunately, the years have put a bit of weight on here. Not a lot, but enough to stop it completely going So, over. is this but to do with Avril's cooking, do you think? No, or? mine. I'm the chef. OK. Is it going to make its money? The reserve is 150 quid. I have not got a clue. Here it is now. There it is. What may we say for it? £100 started off at £100. At £100. And 10 is the now. At £100, the bid's here at 110 anywhere now. At £100. Come along now, I'm waiting for you. Really interesting. I think the reserve at 150 is just a little bit too strong. At £100, 110, 110, 120. 130 is the now. At 120. Had enough? At £120 then. Can't sell it, I'm afraid. So, not sold. Now, how are we going to resolve this? Well, it's simple, isn't it? You, sir, are going on a diet. <laughs> OK? <laughs> so you're going home, yeah. you're taking the jacket with you. Quite right. OK. And that is the name of the game. Now, that is the real deal. Robert, what happened? Back in the den, there's even more military flying around. So, Trevor, what have you got for Tracy? I brought my late father's uh, RAF medals. I'd like around £100 for them. Could you tell me a little bit about her? They were my late father's. As you could probably see, these are uh, ex-RAF medals. And the last one here, on the, which is the blue and white one, is a police long service medal. Right, Which okay. those two letters accompany. Right. And that's, of course, his trungeon. That's very interesting. Yeah. Right, let's have a little look at what we've got. So, mm. these are a set of campaign medals. This one's for the uh, Star of Burma, and this one is France and Germany, and this one is... The 39, 45 campaign medal. Right. Mm. And then we've got two George the Six, one without the crown and one with the crown, and then the Police Service Medal. Mm -hmm. And then we've got these interesting letters. This is from the Majesty the Queen for long service and good conduct medal in recognition of your 22 years of police service. And this one? I think the second one is from the Chief Constable. Yeah, Chief yes, Constable. Yes. Yeah, OK. And then we've got the original truncheon. 
I think it probably dates around 50s, 60s. Mm -hmm. And it's still got its original leather strap. Mm -hmm. Though I have to say, they're not very rare. You know, there is a few of them around. Yeah, I would imagine, imagine yeah, so, there is. yeah. But it's a lovely, lovely set. So why are you thinking of selling it? Oh, they're really upstairs at home. They're not doing anything. So I thought I'd sell them and the proceeds I'd donate to the Arboretum at Oleros. It's a services commemorative uh, gardens. Right. I would like to try and buy them. Right. Right, I'll get some money out then. So we've got 20, 40, 60 pounds. Not quite enough. Not quite. Not Okay. Don't see them for much more than that, to be truthful, but because it is for a good cause, I will give you what I'm going to get for it, and that's where I'd expect to be. Is that your very best? It is really, yeah. Yeah. To be truthful. I was hoping for a little bit more, to be honest. <sighs> OK. I'll give you an extra £5. That gives us £85. I am not going to make a penny on this. Have you got another five and a match it and we can have a deal? You really know how to push me. <laughs> <laughs> it's for a fantastic cause, so there you are, £90. Right. We have a deal. Yes, we do. Thank you. I'm perfectly happy. £90 will be very nice for the charity. Stepping up to the crease is Henry. Is Mark in with a sporting chance? I've bought in three items of cricket memorabilia that I've collected over the years. I'm not going to take less than £150 for them. I'm a bit stumped on this one. I'm not going to bail out too quickly, though. I'm definitely going to have a go at buying it. Umpiring this deal are the Duke and our auctioneer, Robert. We like sporting memorabilia in the sale room. I think it's a particularly interesting lot. Me too. Obviously, these are items you've collected over the years. Yes. OK, yeah. what's their history? The first one, this one. Yep. 1972 Australian Touring Side. The only day I ever bunked off school. <laughs> uh, uh, but me and my friend we got the bus down to Longton Cricket Ground. The Australians were playing the minor counties. Yeah. And we went down, got there quite early, uh, just as the Aussies were getting off the bus. And they asked us if we wanted to carry the bags. So we carried the bags. And when we got in there, they took us in and signed us the autographs, which what is great. What an amazing experience. And who won? Oh, well, Australia, unfortunately. But, uh... Always. What about the bat here that I see is signed by the one and only Kevin Peterson? He, yeah, Kevin Peterson. Uh, a few years ago, oh. I bought a four or five items, mainly his investments. Subsequently, I've sold a few of the others, yeah. and this is what I've got left. And then we're moving up to this one, which is the New Zealand team in England in 1969. How did you come by that? I worked with a lad who he just said to me one day, you like cricket, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, I've got a bat with some names on it. You can have it. So the New Zealand touring side's on the front, yep. and then on the back, you've got the four counties all signed. I mean, what and a, what again, some classic names. Yeah, so. what an amazing piece of history, really. I mean, the, the most famous one here is Richard Hadley, um, who's the second from the right, who is now Sir, Sir Richard, Richard Hadley, and an absolute legend in, in cricket. Um, I mean, it is a super, super collection. You know, why are you getting rid of them? These have been sitting in the loft. And, and we haven't really got room for them now, so it's, unfortunately it's time for them to get. Now, Robert, you're a bit of a cricket fan, I believe. Yeah, I love it. Old Trafford, lovely place to go to. OK. Yeah. The thing that caught my eye is the Kevin Peterson, the KP. Yeah, controversial now, man. Yeah, no question about it. This man is gifted, he's controversial. The other things that are in amongst that lot are really interesting, but that cricket bat of Kevin Peterson's is the one which I quite like us on my wall, wouldn't you? Where are you mm. going to place your estimate, Robert? 100, 150. I think it might do the job. We'll see okay. what happens. Now, this guy, Henry, I just know he's going to go for this. Yeah. Let's see what Henry puts on the table. So, Mark, I'm going to get some money and see where we want to be. OK, 20, 40, 60, 80 pounds. You're looking at me as if you're going to burst out laughing. Well, I was wondering which one that for. <laughs> <laughs> Am I a million miles away? I'd say half a million miles away, not a million miles. Half a million, half a million miles away. I'll put 90 quid on the table. 
Here comes the Duke. Well, yeah, coming at this stage, because you probably need a little bit of guidance, sports memorabilia is very collectible. As a package, 100 to 150, I would have thought was reasonable, but it wouldn't surprise me if it brought a bit more at auction. So I'm going to leave you with this lad. He's fair, but he knows a good lot when he sees one. <laughs> Thanks, David. Well... Um, I'll take this tenner back. I'm going to put a 20 on the table, Mark, and 100 quid is where I want to be. And it's really your, your call. Look, more knock for six than bald over Henry, so I'm going to say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> and off to Orson it goes. Are you sure? I am. OK, Mark, you've been a star. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And he didn't work hard enough to get my items, so I'm hoping you're going to fetch a lot more money when I go to the auction. I was getting a bit nervous about it, putting more money on the table. Um, I just hope I didn't drop a googly. And it certainly looks like Henry has got it wrong again. I'm not offered enough. 20, Robert has got some there. news. Kevin Peterson has launched his new autobiography, so inevitably that's created a lot more interest. £200 is now the estimate on that. He may well be right. Time to find out. But as Mark can't make it, his friend Ken is fielding this one. You're obviously a pal of Mark's. That's right, yes, I play cricket with Mark and know him very well. Yes. So you've come in your cricket attire? I have, my old cricket sweater, which my mother made for me 37 years ago. Right, now, these items that your pal brought along, the reserve has been changed from 120 and brought up to 200 quid. That's correct. Now, the question is, has Mark done the right thing? Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? We are indeed. Cricket Pat, there we are. This wonderful collection of cricket memorabilia. Absolutely wonderful. What may we say for it? Lot number 15, 150 pounds a bit straight away. 160 is an hour. 150 bit of 150, 160 anywhere now, do I hear? It's 150 with the auctioneer. They're looking for 160. Come on, this is a really interesting lot. How much for him? 150 pounds. Still with me at 150 pounds. No interest anymore on this. At 150 then. All quiet and done. Not sold, I'm afraid. On the day, it got up to £150. It did not sell. So the changing of the reserve has made all the difference. Seems to have done, doesn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to take things back to your friend Mark. I am. I expected this to sell, but sometimes you get bowled out on the first ball. That's the nature of the game. Back in the den, Bob is pleased as punch to be sitting down with one of his favourite dealers. I'm glad I've got to chew it. I'm, I do believe he's a fair dealer, and 150 would be nice on the day. Not a Toby Jug, a Mrs. Toby Jug, and I love it. The colours are good, the age is good, and I just like the character. And uh, this is going home with me. First of all, tell me what you know about it and, and how have you acquired it? Has it come down the family or...? No, I've had it 30 to 40 years. Ah. I had a fascination with Toby Jugs. Right. Uh, collected something like 400 of them. Did you really? Over the time. But uh, this one, known as the Gen Lady, I bought at auction. And there aren't too many female Toby Jugs. No, no, world. I'm aware of that. I but there are one or two variants of the Gen Lady. That's possibly the best. Well, you yes. would say that, of course, wouldn't you? <laughs> but, um, OK, the colours and the rest of it, they're so vibrant. And yes. It's amazing condition. I, I have spotted a bit of restoration. Yeah. And this arm and, and, and probably the whole arm, but certainly a fair amount of the arm and the bottle has been replaced. Right. Um, and, but very well done. Must have been professional, yeah, because yeah, I haven't picked it up. It's early 19th century. It's going to be 18... Pre-1850, 1830, 1840. Exactly. Uh, although it's a sort of almost a cartoon characterisation of somebody, it's almost like that's how they were in those days. Exactly. You can see the lady in the pub of this sort of proportion, maybe maybe not such an odd-shaped head, but everything else is just typical, isn't it? Uh, exactly. So you've had it 30, 40 years. Why are you not hanging on to it? Uh, time comes, you reach an age where you've got to clear stuff out. Yep. You, can't, you can't carry on forever with them. That's why I'm here now. Time to go. I want to buy this. I want to take it home. Well, I might want to take it home, so... Yeah, well, it's about to be good on the day. Then. You'll have to be good on the day. OK. 20, 40, 60, 80, 
100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 200. You're very good at bluffing. Do you play uh, cards? I'm not a gambler. 20, 40, 60. <laughs> More than you thought it's I was going to put on the table, wasn't it? Uh, I won't comment on that. <laughs> OK, David. Bob, well, first of all, oh, I'll tell you what, you know, <laughs> I've never been really a Toby Jug person, no. but this knocks my socks off. I've never seen one of these before. No. Now, the estimates range from about 100 to 150 or 100 to 200. Stuart has got 260 on it. Your choice. Thank you, David. Sit it out with a man. He'd probably love to buy that. Fine guy. You might tempt him for a few more quid, or if you want to gamble, I'll take you there. Right. But you've got to make it worth your while if you go to the auction because of the commission. OK. So... <laughs> what have I got? 260. 300 pounds. You're showing signs as you like it. I showed you a sign before we started, I liked it. Yeah. But 300 pounds for price. I was looking for possibly a little bit more. 300 is that. You're stopping there, are you? Are you telling me that you won't give another 20 for that? I know you love it, Stuart. When I, I saw his eyes, you know. <laughs> Lie me for another 20. You still got me another 20. Ah, then, another 20 well, there. So, okay. I mean. OK. Yeah, OK. I'm going to say, I know give the lad a chance. Yeah. He's come here, he's put his dough down. They said one to two. He's gone to 320. Okay, All right, David. get yep. your hand out and get shaking his. <laughs> All right, that's well it for me. Okay, well done. Stephen. Thank you very much. Lovely okay. job. Okay. I did say at the beginning that I was after 150. That would have made me happy, but Stuart being the guy he is, he paid his money, and I'm highly delighted. Bob loved it, David loved it, and I loved it, and I've got it. End of story. Not quite. Let's see if Stuart and the rest of the dealers have actually made any money. <laughs> Henry just didn't put enough down and let everything go to auction. So if you don't buy anything, you don't make anything, Henry. On the other hand, Stuart bought everything, but did he pay too much? First, there was the 1950s phone. I bought one yesterday, I'll buy one tomorrow, and I bought one today now. But he's still waiting for a buyer to call. When that special lady came into his life, he fell head over heels. I want to buy this. I want to take it home. Just as well, because that's where she still is, in his shop window. Thank goodness for our new girl, Tracy. She left the den with a Louis Vuitton handbag on her arm. I think you will do well with it. No, I'm going to keep it. She might be a new dealer, but she's a typical one. The first chance she got, she shifted it. However, she was putty in Trevor's hands when it came to his dad's medals. Have you got another five and a match it, we can have a deal. You really know how to push me. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly did. But she made her money back when they marched out of her shop and into the hands of a medal dealer. But the star of the show is the handsome hibiscus pattern Moorcroft vase. First, it gave seller Derek a £60 return. All right, so what did you pay for it six years ago? It's 120 something like that. Second, Alison knew there was a profit in it. This vase will walk out my shop, no problem at all. And it did. She made exactly 60 quid too. A beautiful Moorcroft vase made in the potteries, sold in the potteries. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time. Dickinson's real deal. TTFN, ta-ta for now, and don't be late.